Okay, let's do this already. Welcome to Bubble Gloop Swamp, the fourth world in Banjo Kazooie, which is a thing we are playing. I said earlier that I do not like this world. The first reason is. Well, it's a swamp level that comes right after a sewer level, which makes it feel less distinct both thematically and visually. Wouldn't you agree? So yeah, here's Croctus. He's a metallic golden jeweled crocodile that eats blue eggs. Yeah, sure, why not? Despite the Ryu's talking head, that's actually a friend of his who also wants eggs. He'll be appearing all over the level. These frogs here are kind of annoying because they're hard to hit. Usually. I got that one pretty easily, but they tend to jump a lot. And here is Bottles, with the only move on this level. These waiting boots will basically allow us to wade through the piranha infested waters here and I think a few other danger zones as well later on. Unfortunately they are probably the least interesting move in the game, in my opinion at least. We'll try them out in a moment though. See that mumbo token over there? We can't really get there without getting hit, so we're going to use the wading boots. They get their own theme music, which is cool! And that's about all there is to them. I turned them up here manually, but they have a time limit. I do like how these frogs fall over, although their scream is kind of grisly. The level is peppered with these standing grassy things with brown things on their ends that I don't know what they are called. Here's another use of the invulnerability. It's pretty wasteful, but I guess using it to protect yourself from dangerous areas like this is an extra use for it. The way the swamp is structured is that there are several smaller areas that branch off, each of them with at least one jiggy, and we'll be going through them all one by one, but let's start with this. This is a time challenge. We have 45 seconds to get all the way to that jiggy. It's kind of annoying because if you mess up too late, you might not get enough time to try again and there's no way to restart the counter manually. It's not too bad though. I think the biggest problem here is the camera, which switches between preset angles after every button press, but we prevailed, and now we're going to walk through that path again, this time picking up all the goodies along the way, or most of them at least. And here's another of Crux's friends. It's pretty simple. Now would you look at that? I will be going there later. Oh, and you can probably see those feathers in the background there in that fort-like area. They look familiar, right? Yeah. And there's just this one, Jinjo. And now we can Heart. Well, continue really exploring the rest of the level. Over here, we have something 
of a mini boss. It's like the fight with the mutant crabs on the previous level. You have to defeat a whole bunch of enemies. They're a bit tougher than the regular frogs, but only a bit. This game doesn't really have the real bosses. Not many of them. I think the only true boss fight in the game is at the very end. And it's quite a boss fight indeed. Seriously, it's... I remember it being hard, but... Well, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. For now, we're just going to beat up these frogs. Flibbits, they're called. And for beating the hell out of them, we get another Jiggy. The second. Where to go next? How about... Mm, these platforms here. I'm gonna do some jumping. And the hots from the first level are back! Oh, it feels so good! Ah, a grunty panel. I wonder what this one does. Vandalism. Who installed this? Did Gruntilda set this up here? Why would... Why would anyone do set up a panel that, you know, breaks things in her lair? Yes, I do realize that I did not, uh, there's, like, that goopy-eyed Gruntilda waiting for us there, um, we'll be taking care of that in the next video. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing a lot of Gruntilda's lair in the next episode, I promise you that. Down here you can see there's a lot of goodies that we could grab now, but it would result in us getting seriously hurt. And here, recognize that? These dragonflies appear only in this level, and they are the very same dragonfly that appeared in the, you know, the cool musical intro, the one that smacked into the end symbol. Perhaps you've already forgotten, huh? No matter. Let's go. <gasps> Help this turtle. Mm. Well, that's a problem. How can we help with this? Well, we don't have that many ways of interacting with the world, right? It's a video game after all. That sounded painful. But I guess he got his circulation going. Or maybe the jolt of pain just made him retract his feet into his shell. Yeah, cuz when you're feeling cold and numb, beat your limbs up. You'll feel better right away. And he, he coughed up that jiggy. Was he keeping it in, it in his stomach or throat or who knows? Yeah, I want to get some use out of this move. And that was a waste because there are waiting boots right there. Mm. 
Now, where do you think we should go next? The solution is clear, right? Let's hop right in. Uh, yeah. I don't know why this game has such an infatuation with going inside animals, giant animals, and then witnessing just how impossibly large, disproportionately large they are inside. The second reason I don't really like this level is because there are two minigames we'll have to play that are annoying, and this is the first one. This is a school, which is here for some reason. This is art, clearly. So kiddos, you like Simon Says? I don't. We'll have to beat up these students because that is the only way we can make them, you know, make noises. I really hate this guy. Although these small turtles are at least pretty cute. Or is it tortoises? Actually, with front limbs like that, I don't think they qualify as either. We have to... well, there are three rounds and we have to succeed at all three of them. If you hit the wrong turtle, you take one hit of damage. You don't have to restart the whole thing, but it's easy to forget to the order in which you're supposed to hit them and you can die like this I had some problems with it as a kid and uh, the order in which they sing is I think determined completely randomly so I actually had to remember this and my memory isn't perfect Fortunately, I didn't have too much trouble. Yeah, we're gonna take your trinket. Give me that. You know what? That's not enough. Oh, nothing more. You suck, seriously. We're gonna take all your things. And this too. I'll see you again someday, I'm sure. Asshole. Ugh. Sorry, he really gave... I remember one time when I was a kid, he really gave me some trouble, this whole mini game. Ugh. And here you see why it pays off to leave those pickups for later. There are, I think, two main of these branches left. Oh, and here I got hit by the piranhas. Third reason I don't like this level. Most of it is, well, a danger zone. A damage zone. And you can actually see that Pancho bled when he got bitten. That's... Blood doesn't happen 
doesn't appear much in this game. I think there's this and there's Clanker and that's pretty much all of it. It's not a particularly violent game, not in a grotastic way at least. Ah, this egg here. I really like this egg. It's not a hard challenge by any means, but it's pretty fun. What is this egg? Where did it come from? Did some huge animal lay it? What's inside? We're gonna break it. And inside the egg is another egg. Stacking eggs. There are several layers and all, and everyone has to be defeated with one of the beak attacks. And inside them all is... you guessed it! A Chiggy. How did it get there? Nobody knows. But that makes six. Phew. Waiting for platforms to arrive is the honored tradition of platformers, did you know that? Man, I get so, so tense while recording these things. Uh, even though it's post-commentary. I use post-commentary because I'm not witty enough to be funny and clever while recording live. Anyway, over here we have... Well, the giant head. I don't know what's up with it. Is this like a living thing? It doesn't blink. Is it like the head of a giant crocodile that is buried underground? Is it a, deca a decapitated head? Is it just made to look like a giant crocodile head? This is Godzilla huge. I go on a little jaunt here to explore stuff, but I don't find anything. Not much comes of it. That area here is... well, it's mostly here for you to fall. You'll see what I mean later. But if you fall here, you're gonna take a bit more damage from the piranhas in the water. Not much to do in this corner. Just grab some notes and the ginger and we'll be coming back for those notes soon. I don't really want to spend all those golden feathers. They might be useful, right? Eh, probably not. Okay, so here's the second to last of the jewel crocodiles. The timing can be a bit, tr bit tricky on these. Ah, and that's the last one over there. I'm going to take care of it right now because, well, that's the fastest way. If we progress further into the level without getting him, then, well, we'll have to come back here. It'll be a longer trip. There we go. And that's the golden crocodiles. You will never see them again. Hmm. So three chickies to go. Here you can see that the crocodile head actually has fairly prominent nostrils. I wonder if that's going to be important, huh? Okay, let's get inside this fortification. 
The only way through is the long way around. Yes, enjoy the waiting boats theme. This is probably the longest bit to use these boots. Which I'm fine with, I mean, I just find them kind of boring. There is another set of shoes in the game. We don't actually get to see them fairly quickly, although we won't get to use them until later. And here... There's a chicky on the other side. It's just like the challenge before, but this one's harder. Ten seconds. It's really not that bad for, again, the camera is your main enemy and you really gotta be quick. And if you fall from here, then it's quite a long way to get out of the piranha infested waters. Yeah, falling down here sucks. You can lose half your health like this. But once again, we prevail. Now, we get to meet Mumbo again. Ouch. And yeah, these uh, little bastards can catch when you're taking off the shoes. You have to be careful about that. <clears throat> So, let's say hello to our old friend, who we've met only once before. Hi Mumbo, sorry to wake ya. This time we have enough of your tokens. But first, we have to check what's up here. There's often goodies up here. Almost always, I think. This is one of the more important ones. Okay, and that's both of the pieces. I won't have to go back this, th this time. And... <laughs> you get to grab a token inside his house. It's like... Stealing in a Bethesda RPG, huh? What exactly is Mumbo? I mean, he has rot skin like a lizard, but it's pink? And he's humanoid? And that mask, is that, a, is that a mask or is it his face? I never really understood it. What's this time? Aww, oh, that's adorable. Oh god. Yes, Mambo is joking about killing us and wearing us as boots. And in case you were wondering, you can turn back any time. So yeah, the little crocodile banjo. We can jump, and we can bite. Which actually helps us move faster. I like to use this occasion to talk about something. Uh, Mambo... He says he's a shaman, and while in colloquial use, this term can describe different things, in anthropology, sh a shaman is a very specific kind of um, religious figure. The thing that distinguishes a shaman is that they uh, go into a trance. Which, scientifically speaking, is a state in which they have access to their subconscious and can uh, use information they otherwise would not probably even know they have. Um, they, of course, explain it as getting help from spirits and such. As far as I know, they do not have the ability to turn other people into animals. 
Now, let's walk into this giant croc's nostril like a reverse booger. And inside the crocodile head is... Well, actually, reasonably sized area. <sighs> this is the second and the worst of the two terrible mini games on this level. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk to that jerk in a second. Now, check this out. These are the running shoes. We can't use them yet. Um, but. You can come here after um, unlocking them in, in a later level and use them to help yourself. This is actually a unique situation where you can use uh, one of the, you know, moves while in a transformed state. I don't think this happens in any other situation. Uh, so... This here is vile, he's an asshole, he's meant to be, and even his uh, voice sound a bit, sounds arrogant. Ready on, Blisa. This is hard. This is just... There's no time to waste. Uh, it's like this vial moves faster than you and it's hard to keep up you're competing with him for these as well so ugh. and they go back on the ground after staying above ground for a while and i don't know what happened there why, why didn't that why why did it run off i hate this i hate this it's I'm not even sure if it's possible to win this uh, without either speeding yourself up with the shoes or with the, you know, the trick with the attacking and all. The problem is this makes you lose traction a lot and it's hard to control yourself. And look how close that was! And that's just the first round. There are two more to go. Not ripe? W what are these things even? I don't... So yeah, if you accidentally eat any of those yellow worm things, you lose like two or three seconds. And uh, this can... Eating one can uh, really mess you up. Eating two can easily cost you the game. It's... Look at that asshole getting right in front of me. And I'm losing here. Of course, Vile never messes up. Never. The worst thing is those young boys disappear right before you grab them. That's... Ugh, well, you saw that happen. Look at how close this is again! Oh god! And here we go. Every 10 seconds, the game switches and you have to do the other type of thing. Like there. The worst thing that can happen is if you're about to eh, eat one of them and then, you know, the switch comes. Blah, that's just so annoying. I hate this. I hate this. I don't really have any advice to give here, it's a bit block based I guess. It's important to know not when to compete with him, like if he's nearby it's usually better to just 
go try your luck somewhere else. I'm losing here, like, look at this, look at this, oh my god! And I don't know how he missed, because if it's a tie, you lose, so we got lucky here. Oh god! No, no, no! Fuck you! Likes. <sighs> yeah, sure! Not worth it at all, not worth the time. Ugh. A small mercy is that if you do play that game with him again and lose then, well, you lose a life, but you don't get KO'd, just one life that gets taken away from your counter. <sighs> okay, let's wrap this up. So, back here at these jumping poles, whatever, we have a whole cornucopia of goodies, including the last ginger that holds our last jiggy. Two mumbo tokens right next to each other, almost as close as the ones in that treasure chest in the second level, remember that? And here are the last five notes. One, two, three, four, five, five. There we go, and an extra life on top of that. Yeah. We're finally done. Well, I hope it wasn't too boring. Next time, oh, next time, we are going to have some fun because we are going probably into my favorite level. Oh yes, that's gonna be fun. But not before we explore some more Gruntona's lair. Oh yes. Let's get out of here. Next time, head in there and open another painting world.